views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. Whether she's walking the red carpet or doing interviews, you'll find her with celebrities and all the latest news. She's here, she's there, she's everywhere, she's always on the go. So sit back, relax, and get ready. This is the Corey Taylor Talk. Everybody and welcome to Corey Taylor Talks live from Las Vegas, the number one teen talk show. I am so excited about my guest today. Um, he has really had such a, a unique life and such an incredible career, and um, he, he's had um, he's gone through so many horrible, horrible struggles, but he has come on top, and uh, he's helping people, which is even better. And he's an incredible actor, author, I mean, artist, everything you could possibly imagine. He is. He's a man of many talents and I'm very excited to have him on. So I have with me Tom Beard. So hi, Tom. How are you? Hey, Corey. How you doing? Nice to talk to you. Sorry about my dogs. Oh. There's a... Uh, I must see a squirrel or something. I think they're saying there's a huge storm going on in Lake Arrowhead, California right now, and they're seeing branches go up and down. So I think they're expecting squirrels, and they always bark at squirrels. So no, see, that. we're in Vegas, and it is pouring over here, and it never does. So nice. I understand. I know, right? <laughs> it's crazy. I love Vegas. <laughs> Um, but uh, what types? Of, well, while we have your dogs online too, what type of dogs do you have? <laughs> they're both rescues. Oh, how cool! So they're yeah, little mice. So, so I don't know what they are. Yeah, you know, I'm getting a little feedback here. Okay, uh, is okay. is this a little right. better? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. cool. Um, so why don't we get right into the show? Um, like I said, you had re really such an incredible career, and you've gone through so much in your life. But um, instead of making everything so negative, and uh, you made everything into a positive, and you're really helping people and uh, sharing your message and sharing your story, and I believe helping many, many people out there. Um, so why don't we get into it? Why don't you explain to people, um, first of all, your career, and then um, your books and what they're about and all that you're doing? Okay. There's so much to talk about. So I'm try to you, just, you just pick it up, okay? okay. Uh, most people know me from playing Philip Chancellor the Third on The Young and the Restless. I moved out from uh, Wisconsin when I was 21 years old to Hollywood, and I got Rob Lowe's manager, and a couple years later, I was on the number one soap playing all around the world, big storyline. I had a three-year contract because I wanted to be a movie star after that, and it didn't happen. I left, but it didn't happen. So, uh, and then I, I, my character was dead for 20 years and came back on the show in 2000. Nine, 20 years later with the uh, assumption that I faked my death because I was gay. So me as a gay man, I got to go back to a job I did years ago, proud this time, and the character was gay as well, but uh, they didn't keep a gay storyline going. Uh, so that, that's part of it. you want to ask questions or should I keep going? Oh no! I keep going because um, like I like I said too, you have uh, I what I really want to promote too is your books that you have um out, and uh, I believe you have two more accompanying them because you've had such an amazing response. Um, so why don't you uh, get into your books and tell people a little bit about what they're about? Okay, I will have ten books out this year. Ten books oh within one year. Yeah, uh, the thing is, I'm 56 years old. And I feel great, and I love my life, and I've always had this creative energy. And I tried to get literary agents and publishers for 30 years, and it didn't happen. So I figured out how to self-publish recently, and now that I know that, oh my God, all my books and creative stuff can go on there. Okay, so about 10 years ago, I did write Forgiving Troy uh, with a distribution company in Chicago. But uh, Forgiving Troy is about me forgiving my schizophrenic brother for killing our mom in Kenosha, Wisconsin. He killed her about the same time I left the soap opera in 1989. Uh, she had tried to get him help. She knew that he was going to kill. Uh, we didn't think so. And she had taken him to all kinds of doctors. Uh, but they said, no, no, we don't think he's schizophrenic. We don't think he's going to kill. We just think he's an angry, angry kid. 
But uh, he was hiding a book on schizophrenia under his bed, and my mom found it, and she didn't know if he was learning how to fake the symptoms or if he was really schizophrenic and trying to figure that out for himself. Well, five years after he killed her, when uh, I miraculously got a message from her through a friend that I had to go see him in prison because he needed me, which I didn't want to, he was definitely schizophrenic at that point because he had uh, pretty much... Uh, lied on, on his prison uh, floor for five years, staring at the screaming bugs on the ceiling, he said. And he was pretty much non-existent. He was like Rod, he was like a Charles Manson at only 24 years old. So because I got this spirit message to go back there, I was able to facilitate medication for him, which they only were going to put him on if a relative asked. But none of us showed up. So I was kind of forced there, and then uh, forgiving Troy's about the incredible lifting that he got and that I got. You know, I had my little baby brother back, who I really didn't, you know, I'm in love, but uh, I was never a family man, really. But here was somebody that I understood so well, and he understood me, because I was also dealing with social anxiety in California. So nobody understood me better than he and I understood him, and he actually got to a point of, of remorse, which 70% of kids that kill their mother never get to. So it, it's an amazing story. Absolutely. And um, is, is he serving life, is, or is he going to be there for the rest of his life? Yeah, he's the first person in Wisconsin to get life meaning life, which doesn't mean life. It means 50 years. So he's still in there. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I think that's good. Uh I don't know if he would do harm to other people if he got out. He might. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a, a very um, powerful story. And I'm sure that was very difficult uh, to come to forgiving him. And I'm sure that's why you wrote a book about it. Um, but I, I think I had to write that book. I'm sorry. I had to write it just because it was, it was just unbelievable what I was going through. It's like, oh, my God, nobody's going to believe what happened, this and this and this and this. Oh, my God. Yeah, so that was something that I felt I really had to share with people. And I'm sure it brought a lot of attention to mental health as well, um, because if he went to all these doctors and they wouldn't diagnose him, wouldn't diagnose him, I'm sure that brought a lot of attention to mental health. Yeah, but I don't know if there's a bottom line there. Mental health is such a vague issue. Right. Um, and I'm not a real proponent of medication. Uh, I mean, in his case, he was extreme and he needed it. But for the most part, you know, if I were to really psychoanalyze, can you hear me? Because I'm getting a lot of feedback. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I would say, you know, if I had to make a spiritual vote on what caused him to do what he did, I would say that he just spent too much time concentrating on the dark. Instead of focusing on positive things, he focused on satanic worship and killing insects, and he had an animal killing diary. So I don't know if the voices that he heard in his head that told him to kill would have been there if he didn't uh, kind of pursue that. So to me, mental health, uh, I, I don't know what to say about it. Yeah. No, I, I understand completely, and that's it. It is, it's a hard subject, and especially with what happened, um, I understand it's, it's confusing and tough. So, um, But let's talk about your other books, too, um, how, uh, Young, Gay, and Restless, which uh, came out and has incredible uh, reviews, um, the anonymous... Uh, an, an, I'm sorry, anonymous true accounts, how men really feel about being sexually assaulted. Um, I, I, very uh, important books that people are loving. Um, th uh, Young, Gay, and Restless got incredible reviews. So why don't you tell people a little bit about those books as well? Sure. Young, Gay, and Restless, My Scandalous Onscreen and Offscreen Sexual Liberations, uh, is an incredibly brave book. And everybody says that. They say, I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you wrote that. Yeah. But you have to understand, I'm in a really good position right now. I live in the woods painting pictures for a living. I don't have a boss. I don't have to answer to Hollywood. I don't have a lover that I have to answer to. I don't have it's kids that I have to not embarrass. So I can really be real free, and I did that. So I wrote yeah. everything from when I was a kid, my misconceptions about sex, uh, all the the learning through it, through me being pursued in Hollywood by billionaires and by a bishop, and my tryst with Hollywood stars, and my uh, fear of commitments, and just everything's in there. 
So I'm real proud of that. And uh, I got a letter just yesterday saying, uh, you know, I don't feel ashamed anymore after reading your book. <laughs> and some people may be insulted by it, but that was my intent. I want people to not feel ashamed or embarrassed about their sexual thoughts or histories. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think that's very important. And um, also, uh, I, there was an interesting book. Uh, I, I honestly didn't even know you had 10 books coming out. That's insane in itself, and uh, we will get into all of them. Um, but also one that I saw it was uh, the anonymous true accounts, um, how men really feel about being sexually assaulted. So that you interviewed, I believe, 60 men who were sexually assaulted, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had been uh, sexually assaulted. The the main event, I mean, there were minor events, kind of. But then, uh, at 21, I was in a West Hollywood bar with my cowboy hat, saying, "I'm here to be a movie star." And the photographer said, "Why don't you come over to my place, and I'll show you some uh, what what the professionals, uh, you know, what professional f- photographs are like. You'll need those." And he ended up drugging me, and I. Uh, went unconscious as he was lowering my pants and then I was out all night and I hit a couple of cars on the way home the next morning uh, because I couldn't control my leg. So I don't know what he gave me, but I think what's so interesting in hindsight is I was 21, so I didn't call the cops. I didn't think, I didn't think too deep about it. I didn't think he was a problem to humanity. I just thought it was an individual thing. I called him up and I said, how about those free headshots you promised? So, you know, in a way, I identified with a lot of the cause of the accusers who either hung around him after they were assaulted or, uh, you know, placated him because uh, my goal was to be a movie star. And I just realized, okay, I'm never going to take a pill from him or drink again. But I, I just think it's interesting, the choice I made back then. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, I asked a lot of other guys, their experiences and uh, the book is filled with uh, often horrific events of boys being sexually assaulted uh, like as paper boys like through the church and uh, I hope people that read it feel better and are freed somehow by it because it's really really heavy stuff and and, and the reason I call it uh, how men really feel is I resist uh, conformity pretty much and I hate being told what to do or things to be expected of me and I don't want anybody else to have to feel a certain way because they went through a similar situation so I wanted to ask these guys what was your feelings then what is it now and they didn't all have the same answers no, um, I think that's very interesting because uh Everyone does have different experiences, um, and everyone deals with something uh, so traumatic and horrific in different ways. Um, So I think that is important to point out, and uh, I think that's kind of the problem uh, going on in the world is um, people are like, oh, they didn't react the right way, or why didn't they get help, or why didn't they feel this way, why didn't they they do this? Um, And I think that's important that uh, you really kind of showed everyone's stories and everyone's thoughts and feelings. Okay, I'm having a real hard time hearing you. Oh, is this, I'm sorry, is this better? Uh, a little bit. Okay. I, I'm, I'm sorry, we're trying to fix it. <laughs> uh, like I said, the weather's horrible, so I'm sure it's affecting everything, but... Uh, um, yeah, that's better. Okay, good. So, I, I, anyways, I think that's very important that you're bringing up different stories and, um, I, and highlighting that everyone deals with it differently. Yeah, absolutely. Because don't you feel, uh, I don't know about you personally, but uh, have there been times when people expected you to feel a certain way and you just didn't feel like the majority? Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and I think that's really kind of, I, I was trying to say, I don't know if you were able to hear, but I, I think that's the major problem going on is everyone's expecting people to react or feel a certain way. Or do some, or do a certain thing, um, and it, it's just it's difficult for some people, or some people prefer another way. So I think uh, I think that's important. You brought attention to that for sure. Cool. And uh, so you have yeah. ten books coming out. You said so that was two of them. Why don't you tell about all the other books that you have coming out this year? Cool. In a couple weeks, 
And people can find all my books on my website. Uh, that's TomBeards.com, T-H-O-M-B-I-E-R-D-Z. Uh, and I have the links for the, uh, the e-book version. But in a couple weeks, I have uh, two spiritual books coming out. One, I could call 100 Miracles, but it's really, uh, uh, they want to help us. It's uh, phenomenal true life accounts of the unexplainable. And that is uh, like 50 people offering their accounts of uh, like spirits that have shown up and saved their lives or other stuff like that. It's really, uh, that's like one of my favorite subjects to talk about. So uh, it's a really uplifting book and that'll be out soon. They want to help us. And so uh, people could go to your website to find out all the information about all your books coming out and uh, with, and get them? Yeah, uh, so Amazon has most of them, but then Barnes & Noble will, uh, online will have some of them too. And then I also did my version of tarot cards, and that's called the Blue X, uh, the Blue X Cards and 200 Divination Readings. So, uh, yeah, that should be out in a couple weeks as well as uh, I've got five volumes of art that I'm self-publishing through Barnes & Noble. And these will be hardcover books with uh, over 200 of my paintings in each book because wow. I've painted over 1,000 paintings. So uh, it's really cool. It's a really exciting time. Very cool. And how, how, did, how, I, I, how did you get into all this? Because, uh, I mean, my goodness, people have a problem uh, pursuing something, one thing that's creative, but you're an actor, you're a painter, you're a writer, I mean, and you really, you've done so much, so how did you get into uh, all this creative stuff, especially growing up in Milwaukee, it's not like you grew up in Los Angeles or something, so how did you get into all of this? I think that's probably who I am at my core, you know, I came here, and you know, keep in mind I'm 56, so I've had plenty of time to think about, what am I here, why am I on earth, you know, I think I came here to create and to bring and to give myself pleasure, you know, because I'm quite hedonistic at this point. I live away from the world in this beautiful cabin with my rescue dogs, and you know, my life is just great. Uh, I, I love it. But uh, I always created ever since I was a little boy. You know, I've always been alone working on projects, and I just love that. So, uh, you know, being the actor really wasn't the real me. That was kind of hard, and I was forced. But uh, the artist, that's certainly me. Very cool. So, so you're not interested in acting anymore then? Well, uh, I, will not, I, I would take any acting job just because it helps painting sales. Right. But no, I no longer have a desire to do that, not like I used to. Yeah, well, I, I, think, uh, I think that's cool that you're pursuing what you actually do love. And, um, of course, they all need to pay the bills, but uh, I, I think that's awesome uh, with your art. So what, what type of art do you do, and um, can people commission you, or where can people even see your artwork and all that? Sure, yeah, again, if they go to my TomBeers.com website, they'll see it. And if it's easier to remember, they can also find me at AmericanArtAwards.com. I'm president of the American Art Awards, which is an online thing, and uh, we honor the 25 best galleries and museums every year and in turn they vote on online art from 60 countries so just like 300 artists every year from 60 countries that uh, win acknowledgement from these galleries so that's something that I can operate from this cabin which is great but uh, I've really been making money painting portraits you know because that's what people want pretty pictures of them or their dogs but the truth is my best work is my expressionism. And that's where, like, if I would come home from a Hollywood event years ago and I was so stressed out and, and not liking myself because of that, I would stand over a canvas and just let it happen. I wouldn't even think about what to do. It was like something was operating me. And then what would show up in front of me was pretty much what my subconscious was thinking. And I would be able to say, oh, well, here's that woman I was nervous around. Oh, here's this guy because I, I, I didn't get that audition. Oh, wait, this is I was mad about here because I was drinking too much. And all this would show up in symbols on my painting. And I think that that's my best work because that's the most unique and organic work. Because other people can pretty much paint your dog 
the same way, <laughs> you know. But they're not all going to paint uh, their subconscious the same way. Yeah, that, I was actually going to ask. I was going to ask what type of art you do, but I think that's cool. You do all of it, but um, so expressionism is what you really love, and that's more of your passion. You believe is the best at. Yeah, that's my best stuff. But yet, on my walls here in the cabin, I have landscapes because I too would rather look at something pretty all day right. than heavy, you know, heavy anxious painting. So. Yeah, so I've got five volumes of art. I've got my landscapes, and then I've got expressionism. I've got portraits. I've got pop and floral. And I've got, oh, a huge collection of nudes and trees, which I did. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a voracious creator. Very cool. Yeah, and um, I, this, I, I wanted to go back a little bit to the books because um, I, I really think they're so cool, and I think people can learn so much about you. And, um, and, and just learn a lot and uh, really, like you said, kind of freeing books um, that help people feel more free and better. Um, so why, I, there's one story in there uh, that I kind of wanted to talk about because I kind of uh, have a weird obsession with serial killers, especially now with all the Ted Bundy uh, documentaries coming out. Um, but uh -huh. you, uh, you worked at the bar with uh, Jeffrey Dahmer was a regular customer at, correct? Right, yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer would go to Club 219. I was in Milwaukee at the same time. I was bartending on the uh, upper bar of Club 219, and my lover was this big, beefy, mustached, cowboy, hairy-chested guy bartending in a dungeon. And at one point, uh, my lover, Gary, uh, a voice said to him, there's a serial killer in your presence. An actual voice, he heard that, and he looked around, and the only customer there was Jeffrey Dahmer, who was, you know, just one of his customers. So he didn't do anything about it. But years later, when he saw him on the news, you know, he realized, oh, my God, he was right around us all the time. You know, yeah. so scary stuff. No, that's crazy. And uh, especially for him to hear the voice and everything. But, um, I, yeah, I just thought that was insane that uh, you were in the presence and everything. And uh, obviously he even had the hear a voice telling him that so that's that's really i'm cool. sorry i'm losing you again i can't hear you very well oh is uh i i give me what is this any better yeah okay, okay cool all right um so uh so um you also i i want to like i said i want to talk a little bit more about the books um, you are very open about uh, going under plastic surgery, which um, people are very, uh, they, d they don't want to ever talk about it if they do or anything, but you're very open about it. So um, I think people can uh, gain a lot of knowledge from that too. Um, so why don't you talk about a little bit about your plastic surgery and what you learned from it? Sure, okay. Uh, you know, even, even though I was a soap opera star before I had any plastic surgery, the truth is the camera adds weight. And I was a skinny kid, and I hated being skinny. I hated it. And so, uh, you know, about the time I was 30, I decided to have some surgeries. And I had uh, some uh, silicone injected in my jaw to widen it, and then some buckling where they carve out some of your baby fat right the same area. So it kind of is supposed to strengthen your jaw. And I had a chin implant, which did not look good at all. It looked horrific, because when I smile, my chin goes out. So we removed that. I had my ears pinned back, because my manager <laughs> said, oh, my God, you need your ears pinned back. It never occurred to me. And then uh, I had new teeth, because I had small corn teeth, I would say. And then I had my Hollywood veneers put in. I had some liposuction. And I also had uh, some fat from my stomach injected into my penis. And that's something I talk about in the book, which I never told a soul. I never even told my boyfriends that. So, uh, you know, this book is certainly freeing in so many ways. Now, I, I know you said um, that you want to, you wanted to be more open and uh, and really have no shame or anything. But how did you get to that point? Because um, it is, it's, I, I would. I would imagine for a lot of people, it's a very big struggle to be so open about every single thing, every aspect in your life. How did you get to that point? Um, was it a process? Uh, did it just kind of click overnight? What was the, how did you get to that point? Okay, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps from your question. So, so the answer is really simple. The more you do it, 
the more support you get, and it surprises the heck out of you. You don't expect it. Like, I'll go back to the time when my most embarrassing thing ever was I abused my pet monkey. Uh, this was a, a little after the time my brother killed my mom, over 30 years ago. And I was so horrified that I did that, that I've since become a vegan, and I would never do anything like that. But at that point, I did that, and I had to put it in my book, Forgiving Troy, because that just showed that Troy and I had things in common at that point. But I didn't get, pe- I didn't get people writing me saying, oh, you're disgusting, you're bad. They wrote me and they supported me and they said, hey, thanks for sharing that. And I've had a similar situation and you've changed and I can change. And so what I've found is the more that I've shared that's so embarrassing, the, sh- the more shocked I am at the support I get from people. So, you know, I, that's what I urge. I urge people to try it and see what happens. I think you'll be surprised. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's a very good advice. And um, I, I, I like. I really think you helped a lot of people. And so do you get a big response to people reaching out saying uh, that that did help me feel free and less shameful of everything? Do, do you get a lot of support with that? And uh, people reaching Yeah, out absolutely. You? People really respond to my honesty. You know, and they're very comfortable with that. It makes them feel good. They feel better about themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So I feel really good that even though I didn't get my goal of being a movie star that I wanted from the time I was a little boy to the time I was 49, even though that never happened, I am I am resonating my greatest self, and I am connecting with people, and they are being helped by that. So that does make me feel very good. Yeah, and how do people uh, reach out to you? Because I'm sure um, many people want to talk to you and get advice from you and everything. How do you people contact you? Is it through social media or is it through your website even? Um, uh, how do you people contact you? Yeah, sure. They can contact me at uh, TomBeards.com or Facebook. Facebook Tom Beards. I've got several accounts there, Tom Beards and Tom Beards 2. Uh, but, <laughs> but remember to put the H in Tom or else you'll go to my dad. And he's also writing books. He's in Washington, and my dad writes uh, fiction, some uh, suspense novels. Oh, wow. So you're both writers, then. Yeah, yeah. How cool. So, so it runs the, the creativity runs in the family a little bit then there, huh? I guess so. <laughs> and, um, and so uh, so all your books are on Amazon, you said, and, and your website, and a, a few will be in Barnes & Noble, correct? Yeah, half of, half of the books will be on Amazon, and most of the art books will be on uh, Barnes & Noble. But if you go to my website, I have all kinds of videos and links. Uh, it'll be all there in one place, as well as paintings. People can check out my expressionism, the tarot card stuff. You know, it's all there. Yeah, and I had to ask, because um, I, I try to ask this to as many as my guests as possible, um, especially you and your background and everything you've gone through and um, how open you are with everything. What advice, um, what's like your main piece of advice for people that are listening? Uh, what's my main advice to people? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it has really served me to uh, not uh, conform. You know, consider that I was, I was a gay kid in the 60s and 70s feeling like I was going to hell and the only one. So I kind of broke away from traditions and conformity at that point, just out of self-preservation. And I didn't feel like I fit in in Hollywood, and I've never felt better than I do now in a cabin in the woods doing what I love to do all day. So, you know, that really serves me. It keeps me healthy. keeps me happy. So I guess my advice would be to really, really uh, follow who you are, you know. Uh, yeah. And, and, and also that you can control your life, that nobody's, nobody's dictating, you know, that, that your consciousness, your vibration, your energy is going to attract the same. So, you know, uh, you can decide your day first thing in the morning by your attitude. Definitely. Yeah, I, I think, uh, well, that's, uh, that covers kind of everything. That's a uh, very good advice. And, uh, I, 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 something you keep bringing up uh, that is very important is to not let people dictate you, and I think uh, I think you're very much not doing that, and uh, you're living your best life, and you're helping other people with that. 
and um, you're really expressing yourself, and I, I, you're getting amazing response that's very well deserved. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to be Tom Beard. It's really good. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I mean, to go from starring to Young and the Restless, uh, and uh, to being a, an amazing artist and writer. I mean, I mean, really, kudos to you. I mean, what a career that you've had, and you're only fifty six, correct? Right, and I'm glad you see it that way because there may be others. I'm sure there are some of my soap opera uh, co-stars that look at my book and are embarrassed for me because I disclose the most embarrassing sex stuff. You know, so, uh, you know, but they don't understand. I don't have to adhere to the rules anymore. You know? <laughs> so you can look at it any way you want, but I'm glad that, that you, you understand where I'm coming from. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, uh, kind of speaking on that, um, was it hard being a heart, like known as a male heartthrob um, when you were uh, gay and you were hiding that and hiding your real self? Was that was that a difficult thing, being on Young and the Restless and having that? Uh, well, it was uh, a morality challenge for me because I felt bad lying about it, but I did lie about it, and I would go to personal appearances, and once there were 7,000 girls there showed up screaming for me, and if they would ask if I had a girlfriend, I would just say no. But I didn't say my boyfriend's right over there. <laughs> you know, right. uh, I would do it. All, I would do it now. Certainly, I would. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I think especially uh, for the time that it was, um, people were so hard on everything. And, um, and it, I think in the past few years, we're still nowhere where we should be. But it's way better, and people are way more accepting, and just letting people be who they are and let them live their lives and I think really just treating people like human beings because that's all we are and it doesn't matter who you're into or what you're into you're just a human being and I think that's very important and uh, you're, you're a big step for that I, I truly believe that yeah your generation is amazing it's a totally different world that is so cool yeah well thank goodness it's about time yeah yeah um, so uh, so where can people um I, obviously, your website, I think, is your main thing, but um, everything, please go over everything where people can buy your stuff. Um, if you have any more websites, um, also uh, the American Art Awards. Well, people can check out AmericanArtAwards.com or TomBeards.com, and uh, yeah, and everything's there. It'll direct you to all kinds of links Very or Facebook. Good. Yeah, I think uh, people should absolutely be following you and keeping up to date. And uh, you have a very big uh, Twitter following as well, and you tweet all the time, and so people can keep up to date with what you're doing on there too, right? Yeah, absolutely. I love it. That's yeah. my social life. You're even doing uh, Valentine's Day paintings, I saw, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, not today. I just advertise on Facebook all the time that I can do paintings. Because, you know, I mean, I live in a cabin, painting portraits for a living. It's great. It's great, but of course it does require advertising, so I do that on Facebook a lot. No, that's very cool, and uh, I, I, you're an amazing artist, and I really think uh, with the awards as well, that's an awesome thing you're doing. So, I mean, truly, keep doing what you're doing and uh, following your dreams, and you're doing phenomenal and really helping so many people, and it was really an honor having you on. Well, thanks so much, and likewise, you're really helping a lot of people, and your intent is really just beautiful, so it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day, and happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. Bye. And that was Tom Beards. What an amazing man. Um, what an amazing story, and truly, really, like I said, helping so many people, and uh, I really think shaping the world and making it a better place, and uh, he's just a small piece in it, but he's doing so much, and uh, really changing the world, so... Um, please go follow him everywhere on his websites. Um, keep up to date with him on his social media accounts, his Facebook, his Twitter, everything. Um, and thank you guys so, so much for watching. And remember, never give up. Always believe and you'll achieve. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you and God bless.